NTA. You can't be dirty. Everything is architected and designed by the Almighty. Someone who, who is a Christian is someone who lives in. Hello, good evening, and welcome to Weekend File. We are live in Abuja. Over the years, Nigeria has suffered deficits in the maintenance of public utilities, leading to decay in almost all the spheres of national life. Most of these deficits come as a result of vandalization, theft, non-replacement of major facilities in public offices and institutions, neglect and total abandonment by concerned authorities, among others. The reason is clear. Most Nigerians don't buy into public projects and that's why most social amenities are distanced by many. Today, the president's government has taken a decisive measure to change the narrative. President Mohamed Bukhari last Wednesday signed Executive Order 11, which focuses on national maintenance of public buildings with the new order in force. Ministries, departments and agencies, MDAs, are expected to set up maintenance departments in line with provisions of the order. The order now gives legal backing to the country's national maintenance policy following its earlier approval by the Federal Executive Council. Furthermore, the Office of the Head of Civil Service of the Federation will establish a Department of Federal Public Assets Maintenance. The policy is expected to give a facelift to some of its buildings like the Federal Secretary of Abuja and 24 others spread across the country. Executive Order 11 is the first of its kind in Nigeria with a policy framework for maintenance of national infrastructure. The expectation of the aforementioned is to address the key in national infrastructure and sustain their functional functionality. So tonight on Weekend File, reports from zones will bring us true perspectives with a view to promoting the maintenance culture of national infrastructure. Our guest is engineer Finn Barr, James Zira, Federal Controller of Works, Cardinal State. I am Kenneth Ima Abodike. Now on the news. The federal government says the latest system collapse that disrupted electricity supply nationwide is as a result of vandalization of a transmission tower on the Odubani Ekolebene 330 kV double circuit transmission line. A statement by the Minister of Power, Abu Bakr Aliyu, states that the act resulted to sudden loss of hundreds of megawatts generated, which consequently led to a cascade of plants shut down across the country. While power on the grid is being restored sequentially by the system operator, federal government assures electricity consumers that it is working assiduously to deliver on the much-needed reforms and investments that are critical to improving the capacity and reliability of the national grid. Meanwhile, Vice President Professor Yemi Oshimajo says the development of critical infrastructure is key to economic growth and living standards of Nigerians. The Vice President stated this while inaugurating more projects executed by Ebony State Governor David Umai. Chika Okori reports. Taking David University of Medical Sciences, Ubru, the Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, who also commissioned some road, as well as the St. Joseph Umahi flyover, expressed optimism that the projects will have ripple effects on the nation's economy. I want to just commend His Excellency the Governor again for the great work that he's doing. It's evident that... Uh, a point in state will never be the same. So it is my very special pleasure and privilege to officially commission this group for the benefit of all Nigerians and 
All Nigerians who will use this road to even people from all over the world. The people who were excited about the numerous projects executed by the state governor, Chief David Domahe, said they will contribute to human capital development and stimulate the economy for the benefits of all. In short, women are the best beneficiaries of this uh, project because markets are being owned by women. That uh, medical university is uh, one of a kind, it is exceptional. The two days official visit of the vice president may have come and gone, but East Impact will remain evergreen in the memory of a born people. In Abakaliki, Chika Okori, NTA News. Let's go to politics, where a 56-year-old Minister of Transportation, Chibika Meiji, has declared the interest to run for the office of Nigeria's president in the 2023 January election. King's Lama jury reports that the APC chieftain made the declaration at the Thanksgiving service held at Amiesi Maka Stadium in Port Harcourt. Amechi, at a Thanksgiving service held in Port Harcourt, said his 23 years' experience in public service has prepared him to address key national challenges of security, unemployment, education, among others. He acknowledged the strides made by President Muhammadu Buhari to build national infrastructure and pledged to make the right sacrifice that will uplift the welfare of Nigerians. I pledge my heart mind and soul to the task of building a Nigeria in which every child can go to school. Every young person can find work or support to start a business. Every citizen can travel safely around the country and sleep at night. Plata State Governor Simon Lalong, Senator Ali Ndume, and other notable leaders of APC across the nation noted the strategic role Amechi played towards the emergence of APC-led federal government. When we started APC, we came to this stadium and we launched the zonal campaign. That zonal campaign produced a brand new president for this country. And you have so led the campaign. It's out of his conviction that he had to stop the people of Nigeria. We're happy, we're excited, and we're looking forward, of course, to campaigning for him. The Thanksgiving service was organized by the state chapter of APC in appreciation of God for a successful conversion in Port Harcourt, Kingsley, Amajuri, and TA News. In the meantime, Minister of Labor and Employment Dr. Chris Ngige has commenced consultations on his vision for Nigeria's presidency ahead of the 2023 January elections. His first port of call was a joint meeting of India's Igbo in diaspora with the Igbo Delegate Assembly in Abuja, Ekene Ndulre reports. With the 2023 general election in sight, politicians and interest groups have commenced consultations and horse tradings that usually characterize elections in Nigeria. In this hall are Igbo leaders in the 19 northern states and FCT gathered to reflect on issues concerning the Southeast. Dr. Chris Ngige is consulting with the group on the key issue of zoning and the quality of leadership Nigeria deserves come 2023. The bandits, the robbers, the kidnappers, they are the people rebelling against society. I know what to do if I become president of Nigeria. That's why I'm consulting with people who know me, friends and associates. For these community leaders, major political parties in Nigeria should zone their presidential tickets to the southeast to ensure fairness and inclusiveness. You will agree with me that we have men that are sagacious, politically conscious, intelligent, credible. As they rounded off their deliberations, there was no doubt in the minds of these leaders that the southeast is endowed with candidates that can be entrusted with leadership of the country. Ekene Ndulwe, NTA News. And still on politics, southern governors on the platform of the People's Democratic Party say they still stand on their earlier position in Lagos and Delta State that the party has to respect the zoning principle as enshrined in the PDP constitution and zone the presidency to the south in the 2023 general elections. 
Pesawat dan PDP Governors reaffirmed their stand at a meeting held in Abuja. Timothy Yusuf reports. If it's not our business, if it is done, then success didn't come. Six PDP Southern governors emphasized that they have watched with keen interest the developments in the party, especially concerning zoning. This party has to respect the zoning principle as enshrined in our constitution. And to that effect, we insist that the first thing to do is to zone the presidency to the South. And we stand on that position. The PDP Southern governors explained that they have not seen any reason to change their position because the party was founded on the basis of equity and justice. And we also think that equity and justice is an important pillar that will ultimately stabilize our polity. It may be a bitter pill, but we need to stand with the truth. The governors of Rivers, Akwaibom, Inugu, Oyo, Abia and Bayelsa states attended the meeting. Timothy Yusuf, NT News. Away from politics, after eight years of displacement, 680 households have been resettled in Warabe village in Goza, local government area, as part of Borono state government's ongoing resettlement of communities devastated by insurgency. Governor Babagana Umar Zulum performed the resettlement ceremony in the newly rebuilt community at a ceremony attended by stakeholders of the area, led by the senator representing Southern Borono and the National Assembly, Mohammed Ali Indume. Mohammed Goni reports. Savage communities, Warabe village was displaced in the last eight years by the insurgents compelling residents to flee for safety in neighboring Fulka and other areas. With gradual return of peace, the people clamored to return home to normal lives and government constructed 340 houses for the willing returnees but the number doubled as most displaced residents say they are tired of living as IDPs. They offered to return home to build their own houses or live in makeshifts while they gradually rebuild their houses to which government has given approval. The government has now decided to provide 100,000 more each for those that don't have houses so that they can provide temporary accommodation for themselves, depending what government will do. And I think there is no place better than that. Senator Muhammad Alindumi and member representing the area at the State Assembly, Abdullah Buba Abacha, thank Governor Zulum for returning people of Warabi and other displaced communities. Meanwhile, Governor Zulum has inaugurated Government Day Secondary School Pulka, constructed by the Ministry of Reconstruction, Rehabilitation and Resettlement, and handed over to the Ministry of Education to educate children within the community and other surrounding villages. Governor Zulum who assured support to the school and provide accommodation to teachers, also charged the school principal to impact basic literacy and numeracy and operate Islamic school after closing hours. Commissioner for Education, Lawan Abawakilbe, who described the establishment of the school as timely said, the school is well furnished and that 600 students have so far been admitted, while the member representing the area at the Federal House of Representatives, Usman Ahmed Jaha, provided exercise books to the pupils. Governor Babagana Umara also inaugurated maternity and dispensary clinic provided by the member representing the area at the National Assembly, Ahmed Usman Jaha. In Maiduguri, Mahmoud Goni, NTA News. Still on security matters, the Plateau Elders Forum has condemned the lingering attacks on communities in Mianga area of Basa, local government area of the state. A statement by the spokesman Jonathan Ishaku, uh, the forum commissaries with relatives of the bereaved and wished the injured speedy recovery. The forum called on the government to take a drastic approach in tackling the crisis and work closely with the military. Away from security matters, a line with the federal government drive for agricultural value chain, improving livelihood of poultry farmers, getting youth gainfully employed and bridging the gap of food shortage in Nigeria is a major concern of the Cross River State Government. Governor Ben Ayade reiterated this while flagging off the Cross River State Cluster Farming Scheme and Agropreneurship Poultry Program at the state ultra modern poultry farm in Odubani, local government area of the state. Paul Abel reports. The gains of agricultural industrialization visible in different parts of Cross River State in the present administration. 
adding value to the lives of the people, and mitigating protein deficiency in the country serve as motivation behind this initiative. Governor Ben Ayade, represented by his deputy, Professor Ivara Esu, revealed that 1,000 persons with 500,000 naira each for 250 birds will benefit in the first phase of the program. Professor Ben Ayade government has set up all the necessary things in the industry, especially to support poultry. Within a period of four months, is this a tendency that this country value chain can create green millionaires for our people in Kosovo State? And that is a dream of the governor. Some beneficiaries speak on the program. I want to say thank you, Your Excellency, ben, Professor Ben Ayade, for this great opportunity <laughs> and initiative. And those that do not have interest in poultry farming, seeing me and seeing my successes in this area, I think we would love going into poultry farming. There were goodwill messages from development partners, including CBN and NASA, while the governor and his entourage toured around the facilities to be used by farmers for the program. In Calabar, Paul Abel, NTA News. Let's now tell you that regulating social media in Nigeria by the federal government is imperative in order to control its negative effect. This is part of submission of guest speaker at the 16th annual Ramadan lecture organized by NTA FRCN Vaughan in Kaduna. Suleiman Rigachigun reports that a lecture with the theme Social Media Effect on Morality was delivered by Professor Ishak Olayede, Registrar Joint Admission and Matriculation Board. As a brainchild of the Nigerian Television Authority Kaduna Network Center in 2006, as a fulfillment of its mandate of enlightening and educating the public, 16 years down the line, the NTA, FRCN, and Voice of Nigeria Ramadan Lecture Series has continued to evolve as a platform for discussing national and global issues as they affect the Muslim Ummah. If not properly regulated, social media can freeze identities in time and space. In consonance with the negative impact of social media platforms, stakeholders including former Vice President Nama Desambo, represented, and former Speaker House of Representatives Oladimeji Bankole stressed the need for caution among social media users. Many have negatively exploited the user generation nature of social media platforms to mislead the public and cause panic or even target vulnerable groups to commit cyber crimes. From home, these things can be treated from primary schools, secondary schools, formative years of young people, parents getting involved then we can begin to get the proper foundation that would be very difficult for anyone to dissuade into bad uh, immoral behavior. We can look at it in the moral teacher of religion. To use the moral teacher of religion against the problem of social media. Director General Nigerian Television Authority Malem Yakub Ibn Muhammad, represented by Executive Director News Muhammad Labo, denounced the ills of social media. Social media has become a companion to mankind globally. It has positive effects, it has its negative effects. Not being unmindful of the positive impact of development in information communication technology, stakeholders also suggest regulated use of social media to ameliorate negative effects of falsehood, propaganda, incitement, pornography, among other cyber crimes. Slema Rigachkun, NTA News. Now, authorities in Saudi Arabia have announced that one million people will be allowed to perform this year's Hajj pilgrimage. A statement issued this Saturday by the Commission for Hajj and Umrah said pilgrims from within and outside the kingdom will be allowed access to the holy site. The statement, however, disclosed that pilgrims to Mecca this year must be under age 65 and fully vaccinated against the coronavirus. Participants from abroad must present a recent negative COVID PCR test and health precautions will be observed. Last year, the Kingdom limited the annual Hajj, one of Islam's five main pillars, to 60,000 domestic participants compared to the pre-pandemic 2.5 million. 
The operational readiness and capacity of the Federal Safety Corps is working assiduously towards minimizing road crashes on the nation's highway. This was the FRAC Corps Marshal Boboye Oyemi's message to the passing out of 808 road marshal assistants in Jules. Belkisanuhu reports. Marks the end of a six month long training which focused on regimentation, academic, character modification, and physical exercise for this new set of road marshal assistants who are also tactical personnel. <laughs> Co Marshall represented says road traffic crashes have attracted global concern as people die daily. Thus, the Corps has found it expedient to bring more hands into the system to achieve its corporate goals. We need to assure Nigerians of the operational readiness and capacity of FRS to assiduously work towards minimizing road traffic crashes. Plato State Governor represented reiterated his commitment to ensuring that the FRRC training school is relocated to Shandam local government area for convenience. 808 trainees comprising 679 males and 129 females will be assigned to beef off the tactical level personnel of the Corps to include public education, enforcement, rescue operations, orderly duties, and other duties designed to achieve the mandate of the Corps. In job, MTA News. You're watching the Weekend File on the NTA Network Service. Time for break. Do join us again. Hey guys, making music for you is so easy for me to do. But you know what else is super easy to do? Linking your NIN to your glow line by dialing star 109 star NIN hash. Or I can call 109 from my glow line and follow the instructions. And if I don't want to call, call I can text my NIN to 109. I can even visit glowworld.com slash NIN. And what if you've forgotten your NIN? All you have to do is dial star 346 hash and glow will help you remember it. Someone may ask, what if I haven't registered? All you have to do is go into the nearest Glow World and we'll help you register. It's that easy. So don't get disconnected from all of the amazing voice and data offers from Glow. Linking your NI into your Glow line is simple, safe, and 100% free. It's zero hassle. Under the distinguished chairmanship of the Honorable Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, Saadia Umar Farooq, the Lake Chad Basin Commission, under the leadership of Ambassador Maman Nuhu, the Executive Secretary, is convening the first annual international forum on the development of the Lake Chad region at the Abuja International Conference Center. Date, Monday 11th and Tuesday 12th, April 2022. Theme, Lake Chad Basin climate change, security, resilience, and development recovery. The forum will bring together high-level local and international actors and decision makers from Cameroon, Chad, Niger, and Nigeria, the World Bank and other development partners, academia and research institutions, and beneficiaries. Also in attendance, engineer Suleiman H. Adamo, chairman of the Council of Ministers, Lake Chad Basin Commission, Honorable Minister of Water Resources. Special guest of honor, Vice President, Federal Republic of Nigeria, Professor Yemi Oshibajo. Chief host, Honorable Muhammad Musa Bello, Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, FCT, NAUSA Organizing Committee. Every harm attack, he falls sick so frequently and misses school often. I keep him away from junk food. He also feeds me apple. She said an apple a day keeps <laughs> If you want to keep germs away, then use Dettol Soap regularly. Me. Germs and disease spread easily during Hamilton. For this, use Dettol Soap. Dettol protects from up to 100 illness-causing germs. Dettol Soap is endorsed by the Nigerian Medical Association. Be Dettol Sure. Dear friend, how are you? Hmm, I can smell the goodness of Easter around you. But wait a minute, do you know you can enjoy Easter in luxurious comfort like never before? Because this Easter, Bad Mates Furniture invites you to discover new levels of comfort with furniture that brings life to your home. Seriously, now is your last chance to have a memorable Easter and beyond. From 21st March to 20th April 2022, get furniture you love at unbelievable low prices with free gifts in our showrooms. Hurry now before others choose the finest units you want. 
There are certain moments in the day when I need my me time to just unwind and indulge. Now available in 30 grams and 450 grams. Check this out. It hasn't been such a long time since people first started shopping online and it was easy to keep up with the clicks. Little by little by little by more, the clicks added up to be more than the stores and e-tailers worked harder than ever before because they had to keep up with the clicks. All of a sudden, there are so many must-dos if you want to keep selling, like delivery there, no there, or there. And make it tomorrow, first thing. No time for borders. Got to stay in control, to stay in the flow and continue to grow. But we'll help you. Keep up with the clicks. Our pastors, our imams, in every church, in every mosque. Please, realize that in the course of praying for peaceful and transparent elections, we all have duties beyond prayers. If we want a stable society before, during and after the elections, what should you be saying to those that worship with you? All Sundays and all Fridays, you are saddled with the responsibility of bringing up good generations. It is therefore your duty to both man and God to ensure peace all the time. No matter about elections alone, people talk to people and people listen. Talk to your followers. Make them listen to ensure peaceful 2023 elections. This message is from the National Orientation Agency. Thank you for staying with us on Weekend File. Now, maintenance culture is an attitude which is sadly lacking in Nigeria, whether in the home, office or school. Government being the largest employer of labor in the country, ministries, departments and agencies are responsible for the maintenance of government property and other utilities. A fine year Zumbar in this report examines the procedures adopted in the civil service and the maintenance of government infrastructure of any country leads to bureaucracy in the administration of her governance. This explains why the civil service is a bureaucratic system. The procedure adopted in the maintenance of infrastructure is not profit-oriented. This leads to slow reaction and delayed response to business challenges. A visitor to any organization in Nigeria will shudder at the level of resource wastage in the public sector. Uh, it's a question of our mindset. We have refused to develop our mindset, you know, to understand that there are core values we need to defend, and one of them is patriotism. If you are not patriotic enough, you would never see government property as your own property. Government needs to mobilize people to realize that the project Nigeria is a collective ownership. It is your duty to draw the attention of the other person. Forget about the X, Y, Z amount of money that you might make from this thing. And the fact that you are not going to make money from a particular project should just make you fold your hands. That is not proper. We are talking of maintenance. We are talking of something that you achieve for some time and others will be able to inherit from you for, for the sake of continuity. We are the government. And uh, when you are there, you are given a responsibility. It's to hold that responsibility so that others were able to hear it from you. Meanwhile, the organization responsible for securing government property, the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps, was not forthcoming with any comment. In Abuja, he found his number and teams. And having an adequate understanding of the social economic importance of projects designed by the federal government to serve the purpose of national development and general attitudinal change to proper handling of national assets have been identified as some quick remedies to promoting a good maintenance culture. Abolade Salami reports. Built over three decades ago, the Ijesha Fruit Bridge, located around Oshodia Papa Expressway, Lagos, was constructed to facilitate easy crossing by pedestrians with a view to reducing the chances of road accidents around the access. Three weeks ago, a section of the bridge was damaged by a truck driver resulting in its closure. This man is endangering the lives of many residents around here. Look at all our people crossing on the major road. This is what this thing will have presented. 
The Ijesha Fruit Bridge is just one out of the many important national infrastructures spread across the metropolitan city of Lagos, being vandalized by unpatriotic Nigerians. Other historic monuments have also suffered such damages, including the Third Melon Bridge, which was once regarded as the longest in Africa, the old National Assembly complex in Tafabalewa Square, Lagos Island, and the National Arts Theatre in Igomu. Uh, we can protect our national asset from which in the way if we see this asset as our own. Okay? Look at this one. Look at it. What's in the way? They are using a good tool too. So because people are not quiet, people are going there, they are so there are major infrastructures, the gadgets that are there. For those they, they are left there, people are removing it. Emmanuel, who has lived in Lagos all his life, believes that these notable architectures should be properly preserved for posterity's sake and education on the importance prioritized. You need to understand the value of these historic properties. Festac, TBS, you need to understand those things. Third main land bridge, you need to understand the value, national. the importance of those things in our national unity. A cross-section of Nigerians also agree that the infrastructure would better serve strategic purposes with better maintenance culture. In Lagos, Abaladi Salami. NTA News. Now let's quickly join our guest tonight on Weekend File, Engineer Finbar James Zira, the Federal Controller of Wex Kaduna State. He is in our Kaduna Network Center. Good evening, Engineer Zira. Good evening. Thank you. From the full going, uh, it appears uh, mindset and um, lack of patriotism on the part of Nigerians happen to be the bane of um, um, maintenance of public infrastructure in our country. How do you react? It's a very sad development. It's so sad because it's like a general attitude we tend to look down on infrastructure development. Most emphasis are placed on project development, the life cycle, when you finish your product, your handover. We don't think of the development of the infrastructure itself. It has a life cycle. It's a liking to a woman who after nine months cares for herself. After delivery, she just abandons the child and the child is allowed to just wander. Of course, the consequences is better imagined. This Executive Order number 11 by Mr. President is well, a welcome development. It's long overdue. And really, it's something we need because infrastructure is key to the development of every society. It's that it's not enough center to development. Without it, we have we suffer many consequences. And most times, because of lack of stakeholders' engagement, maybe that's why people take it for granted. They see public property as government owned, it's not their own. And that kind of attitude begs them to look the other way instead of coming together to ensure that we work towards sustaining this infrastructure. Most times people even go to undermine them. And uh, apart from the architectural def or defacing of our infrastructure like we see, the consequences are far reaching. Because if you have them like the senior Saint Saint showed in Lagos, where you have the pedestrian rate demolished, on the road sector, it's much more than that. If you look at it, it affects chain supply, it affects movement of goods and services, it affects everything. The economy is affected, and the individual too, the, the vehicle, the maintenance cost is higher, there, there is so much debt on the road, there are accidents, so many things affect. If you look at the cost, it's so colossal that we don't even sit down to think about it. Maybe that's why it has not been taken serious. The federal government in the rural sector has been, in recent years, committed a lot to road maintenance. Of course, we have FEMA, like we know in federal, under the Federal Ministry of Works and Housing. In the last two years, a lot of intervention has been done. And this has led to a lot of uh, problems solved because it allows for seamless travel. It allows to cheaper maintenance of vehicle. It allows for agricultural products being taken from the farm to the city center. It creates employment. So it's a win-win situation if all of us really come to a point whereby we take infrastructure maintenance as key. So with the new order now, the national maintenance policy has been strengthened. We believe that there will be deliberate decision to ensure that the maintenance of infrastructure is not taken for granted. And that even when new infrastructure are constructed, an amount of money will be set aside for continuity, at least a few years to it. Because 
Most times when this thing happens, it starts in bits. It's teaching time says nine. If we don't attend to it, before you know it becomes bigger and sometimes it's abandoned. So this one is a work on development and it will help us because a lot of money is being wasted. And uh, if we're able to get our infrastructure in order, the, the lifespan of those infrastructure will be achieved. But the way it is now, we just build and allow it to just go that way. It's, there's no way it can stand on its own. Many factors will impact on it. We have population growth. We have environmental factors. There's technology development. All these things will impact on it. And we have to daily make sure that a system, an inventory system is put in place so that we can really gauge them. And once it happens, we intervene immediately. That way, we'll be able to get the full benefits, get value for money for all the money we spend in infrastructure. All right. Uh, we want to agree with you that um, the executive order 11 comes at a very critical time in the history of our nation. Uh, but then we are looking at um, real constructions, reconstruction, and uh, the rest of them in terms of uh, maintaining some of these uh, public utilities everywhere around the nation. In fact, the federal government has already started with um, the federal secretariat here in Abuja. And of course, you remember that there are 24 others spread across the nation. So how do you look at uh, what the government is doing in that direction? Well, it's, it's a very good development because in the other secretariats, if you go there and you look at what is happening, even the condition, the, the atmosphere is not even conducive for work. People just come there and the place is defaced. Most of the facilities sometimes are not working. You can imagine you have to go elsewhere sometimes to take care of yourself. Sometimes the lighting systems are down, the lifts are not working. With this development, when these things are there, it's beyond just giving money to workers. They'll be happy. People will be willing to spend more time. And of course, if you're working under that atmosphere, the best will come out of you. So it's a very good development. And I think this will impact positively towards work effort and commitment and the productivity of workers will be enhanced. So it's a welcome development. By the time this thing is done, a lot of positive things will come out of it. The government, of course, is responsive to uh, a whole lot of yearnings, particularly in this direction. But even tonight, we learn of uh, or some kind of uh, vandalization, even at the national grid. And of course, um, some um, Nigerians don't understand that we need all those things to be functional for us to enjoy as citizens of the country. What are you telling these um, people who don't respect national economy and all that, and then go ahead to vandalize public utilities, even to the detriment of uh, their own communities? Yes, I, sometimes it's like some people don't know what they are doing. I think there's need for advocacy, there's need for stakeholders' consultation periodically. We need to talk to them within the localities. We need to get people who will go about telling them that this thing is meant for them. You can imagine a drainage being constructed, and because of construction, people will come and fill it with debts. And whenever there is flooding, they're the ones that get affected. But like you put, put it, they'll go and vandalize materials. Sometimes they don't know what they are doing. And most people, too, they are deliberately doing it. And like put, you put it, the, the security defense agency must be put in place. Because in, in, in such cases, putting measures must be put in place so that it will serve as deterrent to those who are doing it. We must take a deliberate stand to ensure that something is done. Because as much as we talk to them, some will not want to take it. So something must be put in place so that we make sure that those who do it are punished and they, 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 they will serve as deterrent. And then, most important, like I said, stakeholders consult. They let them know that this institute infrastructure is owned by everybody. Government is for people, and the people are the ones who own them. So if we talk to them and continuously, repeatedly talk to them, I believe it will make a big difference. But most important, too, we have to put check and balances to ensure that these things are not allowed, are not destroyed, and people are that just to go like that. You know, in, on the road sector, sometimes people don't understand. When the vehicle had problem, they would pack it, drain the oil on the road, before you know, it will they, they have to compromise everything. And these things are said over and over again. So beyond talking, the old security agencies will be cooperate, will be cooperated to see that they contribute in trying to ensure that those who do it are addressed properly so that others will not take it for granted. Jinia Zira, we'll talk some more right after the break. Of course, you're watching Weekend File on the NTA Network Service. Do stay with us.
And miss his school often. I keep him away from junk food. He also feeds me up. She said an apple a day keeps. <laughs> if you want to keep germs away, then use dental soap regularly. Me. Germs and disease spread easily during Hamilton. For this, use dental soap. Dental protects from up to 100 illness causing germs. Dental soap is endorsed by the Nigerian Medical Association. Be dental sure. Welcome back. The lackadaisical attitude of some Nigerians to maintenance culture as well as vandalism of government infrastructure has negatively affected infrastructure development in the country. And some key players in Enugu want government policies aimed at promoting a maintenance culture to be implemented to the later. Chine Yemwe reports. That a great portion of a nation's wealth is evident in the total value of its public properties and buildings. While the federal government is fulfilling its obligation of providing adequate facilities, properties and buildings for the good of its citizens, it expects the citizens to manage and maintain them effectively to ensure its sustainability. Sadly, maintenance culture is an attitude which seems to be lacking or declining amongst Nigerians, and this has become a major problem to government at all levels. The implication is on the economy of the nation, as well as the individual himself. During industry controls the economy of any Maintenance, constant maintenance would be very nice. More worrisome is the vandalism of some government property and infrastructure, which are oftentimes sold to merchants who in turn resell them. 
This attitude no doubt poses a threat to the society, and life is made more difficult for the law-abiding citizens. There's a great difference since they left. Dilapidation, nothing is going on again. The quarters are deteriorating every day. You can see the drainages, you can see the road, everywhere is down. Key players were of the opinion that a poorly maintained building or facility reduces the quality of life and contributes in some measures to antisocial behaviors, which threatens the socio-political environment it finds itself. Experts, however, say getting the residents and leaders of each community to assist law enforcement as well as security agents in securing government property and infrastructure could help in ensuring its sustainability. In Enugu, Chinayangwoye, NTA News. A federal government buildings in Kaduna are in a state of disrepair, begging for urgent steps of rehabilitation. Dawood Mohammed reports that hope is not lost as President Mohammed Bugari backs maintenance culture with an executive order. The public buildings across Kaduna is a tale of mixed fortunes. While some buildings are showing signs of decay, occasioned by lack of maintenance, like the Amadou Bello Stadium, which was built in 1964, but today is a shadow of its once glorious past. Without maintenance, without uh, our facility being updated, we can never produce a uh, good athlete for our great country. So facility is part, of, is part of us and we need to maintain it. The Federal Secretariat is, however, faring better due largely to efforts at maintenance. The Federal Museum of Works and Housing has a, a department in the headquarters. They call it FPAM. Federal Public Maintenance Department is in charge of the maintenance of day-to-day -day maintenance of the Secretariat. That's the cleaning of the Secretariat, the sweeping. The recent signing of Executive Order 11 by President Mohamed Bari, giving legal backing to the National Building Maintenance Policy, is expected to improve maintenance culture of public infrastructure. We need a private partnership with the government so that the maintenance of the facility can be, can be updated and can be upgraded every day. Because we're always um, having meetings with the heads of establishments, sensitize them about how to maintain and keep the surroundings clean. Experts in property development sector are, however, calling for caution in the implementation of the new policy. There should be check and balance. People of uh, integrity, should be posted to that department to work. And the people shouldn't be allowed to overstay in that department. At least they should be rotational. Laudable policies have been initiated in the past, but implementation has always been a hindrance to success. In Kaduna, Dauda Mohammed, NTA News. Uh, let's rejoin engineer Zira in Kaduna for his last words on the program tonight. Of course, we are looking at uh, the maintenance of um, national infrastructure, promoting it as a policy of which the federal government has, of course, come up with um, Executive Order 11. Engineer Zira, of course, you've heard the last two reports from Enugu and Kaduna State, and they are talking about uh, the need for something tangible to ensure that Executive Order 11 is clearly implemented in our country in terms of what we are seeing today. So what's the last word? Yeah, we need to walk the talk. After Mr. President signed it, we at the grassroots, those who are in charge must ensure that they do the needful. An asset management system must be put in place that will ensure that those infrastructure and the first instance are first known they are verified, they are articulated, and then we know their present condition. Then an inventory system has to be put in place too. Because, like I said, if you put anybody there who doesn't know what to do, they will not know where to start and where to head to. So we have to get the baseline data of what we have, then put this inventory system so that every day, periodically, because maintenance are in various fold. You have routine maintenance, you have periodic maintenance, you have special repairs, and also there's emergency. We mustn't allow it to reach the emergency stage. If there's routine maintenance, that small bit of problem can be addressed easily. And of course, there will be monitoring and evaluation to ensure that those who are put there are monitored properly to show, to, 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 to show that they are doing their duty. So with an asset management system in place, I believe that we're able to, I mean, do the right thing. And then we hope too that uh, the, the, the people who are there will be there, and the finances that are needful, needed are available so that once these things are known, 
we'll be able to address them in, at the right time. So doing the right thing is very important. Best practice and of course best fit for our own environment is what we need to do so that those who are there, the foot soldiers, will be able to get those information and we address them. And the government is putting policies and by participating with uh, the private sector, PPP arrangements, another laudable option we can go into. For the private sector, they also contribute so that their own effort to what the little money God, the government has can be used for that is why the private sector invests its own counterpart funding towards ensuring that these things are put in place. In the rural sector, the minister is talking about um, how we manage develop initiative. That's a way of participating with the rural sector, with the private sector, and also the, the, the corridor of the road will be maintained by the private sector. If we are in, on ground and we participated in our future development, scouts will not come in, nobody will come and we may come and vandalize them. But when we are not there, it becomes exposed, and sometime before we know the damage has been done. So we need to work the talk. We need to make sure that this infrastructure is put in place. The departments that have been prepared to be put in place, a lot of up the initiative. Once they are dead, I think that uh, the days of our pardon project will be over, and then we'll do the right thing. Thank you. Then we'll do uh, finally, from, from, from also the Executive Order 11 uh, speaks largely of uh, federal-owned uh, infrastructure. What about states? How do you advise them? It has to cascade down to the state and local government level, and even to the private individuals, because it's not only the federal government. If the federal government takes initiative and other people are not participating, I don't think we'll be able to garner all our efforts towards achieving the same goal. You know, this thing has to be taught even in schools. Children in school should be known at home. We should know that the assets that we have is our own property, whether federal, state, or local government, and we should work towards them. We should protect them because when these things are being vandalized, other people watch them and turn their face. So if all of us know that it's our own commonwealth and we, we put our eyes and make sure that those who are doing it, we culture or talk to them, it will go a long way. So we encourage the state government too to also do the needful. They should also put such structures in place so that all of us will work towards the same goal. Thank you very much indeed, Engineer Fimba James Zira. Thanks for speaking to us on Weekend File tonight. Thank you. I will be speaking with uh, Engineer Fimba James Zira, Federal Controller of Works, Cardona State. We are still watching Weekend File. Time for our last break to stay. That in the last decade, this country has been a different war trying to keep the peace and promote the sovereignty and the integrity of the country. The troops are doing their best. The president has given them all the necessary tools. It is left for us as young people and as Nigerians to give them all the support we can. We say kudos to all our gallant military men. Please, whenever you see a police officer in or out of uniform, if you know them, clap for them whenever they need Give them seats in buses and trains and airplanes. Have the airline managers reduce air tickets for them or train tickets for them. Show them that we appreciate what they do and show their families that there is something right and honorable and truly remarkable about wearing a uniform and going into the bushes and the forest to fight enemies of this country that are hell-bent in bringing your life to an end. It's a very tough time. But we have to all put our hands together. Please support our troops and support our police officers. Up next, sports update with Gift George. 3,000 athletes from 21 states, including the FCT, will be competing in 15 sporting events in the maiden edition of the National Para Sports Games holding at the Moshud Abiola National Stadium, Abuja. According to the organizers, the competition which is aimed at discovering younger talent that will place the aging ones is also to give opportunity to the physically challenged persons to compete for honors. If there is no competition, no athletes can improve and excel. And we felt that they deserve their own special uh, national sports competition. It's for us to make sure we train these ones, start training them, put them on competitions and level. In volleyball, Nigerian customs have emerged winners of the Volleyball Super Cup in both the male and female categories. Customs Volleyball male team beat Choir United three sets to two, 25-19, 25-23, 22-25, 25-13, 15-10. -10. While Customs female volleyball team defeated Koa Spikers three sets to nil, 25-20, 25-21, 25-23, 25-24, 25-25, 25-26, 25-27, 25-28, 25-29, 25-30, 25-31, 25-32, 25-33, 25-34, 25-35, 25
2519 and 2518. The Super Falcons of Nigeria, early as of Saturday, lost by two goals to nil to Canada's women's national football team in Vancouver in an international friendly encounter. The reigning African champions played out a goalless draw in the first half against the Olympic champions, but the Canadian ladies came out strong in the second half to register two goals in the 50th and 72nd minutes. The Super Falcons will now take on the Canadian ladies on Tuesday in a rematch. Still on football, in the Nigerian Professional Football League Week 22 fixtures for Sunday, Lobby Stars will host Kano Pillars, Aimba welcomes Rangers, Sunshine Star takes on Abia Warriors, Niger Tornadoes faces Wiki Tourist on the foreign scene. In the English Premier League, results of some matches played on Saturday shows that Everton beat Manchester United by a lone goal to keep hope alive of escaping relegation. Arsenal lost 1-2 at home to Brighton. Chelsea trashed Southampton 6-0 away, while Leeds also got a 3-0 away victory over Watford. With Spurs update, Gift George, NTA News. Let's check out tomorrow's weather. You're welcome. There have been increase in moisture influx into the country, reaching as high as the northern region. Places like Bauchi, Gumbi, Zamfara, and parts of Sokoto experienced thunderstorms in the past 24 hours as seen on the satellite imagery. For Sunday morning, we expect thunderstorms to the southern parts of Edo, Ogun, Ondo, parts of Lagos, Delta, Bielsa, Rivers, Cross River, and Akwaibom states. The prospect of morning thunderstorms to parts of Adamawa, Taraba, southern Kebi, and Niger. Later in the day, thunderstorms are expected to most parts of the southern states, including the high ground areas of Plateau, FCT, Kogi, Kwara, Niger, as well as parts of Kaduna, Taraba, Adamawa, and southern Borno. I'm Fyodora Itum. Thank you for watching. And that concludes Weekend Files.